Hey guys, I just wanted to clarify for the video you are about to watch, it mentions a couple of Shaq rookies that I paid between $75 and $90 for many years ago. Well, one of them I sold in mid-2020 when that card had hit this incredible peak. I got lucky there, and then I used the proceeds, plus a little bit more, to buy a 1956 Topps Mickey Mantle Grail card before that card really took off. So my timing was just you know, incredibly lucky. And since then, that mantle has grown in value quite a bit. And that Shaq rookie has backed off in value quite a bit. Of course, for me, it's not about the money. It's about, I have the 1956 Topps Mickey Mantle as a relatively new vintage baseball card collector. And I'm gonna tell you about that story in this video coming up right now. Hey guys, how's it going? I am Adam and welcome to the Vintage Sanctuary. This last weekend, I experienced my first ever hobby palooza, not having a clue what a palooza is. So I guess I've been upgraded from a loser to a palooza, but hey, I will take it. Actually, I was pretty busy this weekend. So if I had had more time, I would have attended more of the palooza sessions, but I will make sure to uh, make that a priority for next year. And wow, I can tell that just an incredible incredible amount of work went into that Palooza. So uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm anxious to connect with the uh, YouTube vintage card collecting community, which is why I started doing these videos. And I'd really like to go to AC, but, but I'm thankful I have AC because it's pretty hot here today. But uh, Atlantic City is just out of the cards. It's just too spendy at this point. So I'm going to shoot for Chicago in 2023. I'm more patient about collecting cards because I know my collection will grow over time and I'm not expecting to get every vintage card out there. I'm just happy to add, you know, I have some cards I have in mind and I'm happy to add them, uh, add cards as time goes on. And sometimes it's fun to add a card you weren't expecting to add where you're like, oh, this really grabs me. This is cool. Price is right. Card looks, you know, you like the look of the card. So, and I've got a lot of great recommendations from people too. So that's cool. So, you know, I'm not really anxious about that. My collection will grow in time, but I will confess I'm more anxious about connecting with the vintage collecting community, but I have to be patient and realize that will come in time as well. So I want to tell you today, in honor of the Palooza that just ended, how I got my 1956 Topps Mickey Mantle card. So back in July, maybe late June of 2020, is when I started collecting vintage, vintage baseball. I had never watched baseball except maybe the potential last game of a World Series every now and then. And uh, I thought baseball was slow and boring, but I didn't know what I was, I didn't know uh, what I was talking about. My thinking was off. And uh, I had collected some cards, basketball cards, some football cards, but I don't think I had ever owned a baseball card. Well, I was surfing the YouTubes, as I like to call it, and I came across this channel, Talking Ball Cards, and he was doing some sort of grading reveal, and he showed some vintage baseball cards. I thought, oh, those are kind of cool. Well, then he showed a 56 Tops, and he showed the front, and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And he showed the back, and I saw those cool cartoons, and it was just like this nostalgic feeling just overwhelmed me. And I said, I've got to have one of those cards. And at that time, I'm actively collecting coins. So I didn't want to put very much money into uh, into vintage baseball. In fact, my plan was I'm just going to buy one uh, 1956 Tops card. That's it. That'll be the end of my vintage baseball collection. And knowing pretty much nothing about vintage baseball. I looked up the Hall of Famers. I knew Hall of Famers were good. I thought, well, I'm just going to get a Hall of Famer that's cheap, that has a cool cartoon on the back. So let me show you what I got. And then we'll get to the Mickey Mantle after that. So I got this Hoyt Wilhelm BVG5 for $22 back in July of 2020. And you can see, as my MO was at the time, Really, really sharp card, but quite off center top to bottom as well. But, you know, really just gorgeous colors. I know it can be hard to see in these BVGs with the sleeve on the inside, a lot of glare. I love that first panel. Hoyt's knuckleball is one of the toughest pitches to hit. It's coming into this as this sine wave and the batter's holding his head like, how in the world am I supposed to hit that? So such a cool card. So that was the card I got. 
uh, for $22. And I thought, okay, I'm done collecting vintage baseball cards. I have completed my entire vintage baseball card run. One graded, I liked graded cards, 1956 Tops Hall of Famer with a cool cartoon on the back and cheap. Check, 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 checked all those boxes. And then I don't know how long it was. I think just a few days later, I literally had this sinking feeling in my gut because I, as I had looked at the Hall of Famers, I thought, well, that mantle would be nice, but that was, you know, way, way out of my price range. And I wasn't, and I knew I'd need one that was sharp based on, you know, my pickiness at that time. If I were going to get one today, I would go for a lower grade with some wear. But at that time, I knew I'd probably end up with sharp and off center because of my pickiness. And I was okay with the centering being off. Um, but the sinking feeling in my gut was because that's going to be really expensive and that's not in the budget and that's going to, you know, that's over my budget to start with. Plus it's going to take away from the coins. Well, what I ended up doing was I had uh, some basketball that had been sitting in a box for years. I actually, uh, the the biggest cards I had were three Shaq Beam Team rookies. Two were PSA 9s and one was uh, raw. By the way, I still have the raw one. I sent it into SGC, it came back a 9.5. It's a super nice card. I took the PSA 9 that I thought was not as nice, although they were both nice, and I sold it on eBay, and I just got lucky and hit like the peak of the peak on that because the uh, modern basketball took off prior to vintage taking off, and I sold it for like 1225 bucks is what I recall. And that paid for the vast majority of this card. By the way, the other PSA 9 I also sold later. I didn't get as much for it because the market had came down, but I turned it into vintage baseball as well. But I don't remember which vintage baseball cards I got from that. Um, and then I still have my uh, SGC 9.5, so I still have a Shaq Beam team, so that's kind of cool. I don't really collect modern cards. Um, I guess that's quasi-modern, 1992, but anyway, um, you know, I'm keeping that for now. So here it is. I negotiated with a seller on eBay, and this thing is off-center top to bottom. This thing, this gorgeous card is off-center top to bottom. But other than that, wow. I just think you could pull this out of the pack like I think this just probably looks pretty much like it looked when it was pulled out of the pack whenever it was pulled out of the pack you know maybe that was some years after uh, 1956 I don't know and it's got some really cool cartoons as well but yeah this card is just super clean the colors are just gorgeous it is super sharp. You might have noticed that above average sticker back there. At the time I got this, I didn't realize that people can get emotional about those stickers. <laughs> I guess some people like them and some people don't like them because, well, I won't go into that. Okay, so, and this is from his uh, Triple Crown year, his first of two MVP, back-to-back -back MVP years. Well, he had three MVPs, but his first of the two back-to-back -back MVP years. Talk about a year, he batted .353, way above the league average that year, hit 52 home runs, batted in 130 home runs, and I understand war is, uh, wins above replacement, is kind of a way to uh, answer the question, if the player were injured and his team had to replace him with a minor leaguer or someone from the bench, how much value would the team be losing his war in 1956 was a whopping 12.9. That is just almost unprecedented. And plus, of course, they also won the World Series that year as well. So, uh, yeah, if I were to buy this card today, I'd probably get a lower grade and get it better centered. But um, that's okay. You know, I can handle... I generally look for better centering, but I can also handle somewhat off centering when it's just this gorgeous, especially top to bottom centering being off doesn't matter to me as much as left to right. 
So then I thought I was done, actually. I mean, the goal was get the mantle and call it good. But of course, that was just the beginning. I've been collecting uh, vintage baseball big time ever since. Thank you. I wanted to bring out my big card here and share it with the collecting community in honor of the recent Hobby Palooza. I hope you had a wonderful and peaceful time in the Vintage Sanctuary.